What, what town is this? Nolensville. Nolensville. What's up, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com, and we are here in Hendersonville? Nolensville. Nolensville. I was not even close. <laughs> Nolensville, Tennessee, at the Hit Lab, and we've got Joey Lewis here, Nate Headley, Casey Smith, Jason Ferber, and we were talking some hitting. They were talking some hitting, and it was some great content. We want you guys to check it out. The ones that I like with these the most are like when guys, come over here for a second. If, if they go turn this way, like, are you a lefty or righty? Lefty. All right, then you stay there. So like, you know, like you, you, so you're setting up pictures over there. Like, some, what I liked about them was that it let guys, like if you put your head back on this for a second, I actually saw Hunter do this where he was like, when guys don't know how to hinge, yep. You know what I mean? Like the, when, when, when they don't hinge properly, they don't actually know what it is to, to get, just like a pitcher when he's on the mound, he's like, from here, they're like preset a little bit and they're in a the hinge so they can just get that thing and go, right? Like <clears throat> if you think about keeping your head here but and keeping your head connected to this, but then getting, turn just chest over the plate, mm, chest over the plate, just right there, right? So like that's him hinging his oh. hip, right? And then what happens is if he would take this, and just say, just put your hands on this, like, like, put your hands like this in, in that position right here, right? So like, once he's in this hand, and then they would, like, the, the, the one thing they had was like that laser pointer. You saw that thing? Yeah. So what, he, what he's trying to do to understand, like, instead of just going back and forth and swaying back and forth in the, in the leg, like, to try to teach kids to say, if you had a laser pointer, those things that like chase cats and stuff, and, you, and it was on that wall and it had to stay, that laser thing was on, it had to stay in that little tiny circle, right? How do I rotate my hips without moving this towards back and forward, right? Go ahead. See, there's a lot of, a lot of kids, and when they do that to do them, you'll see this thing turn, so they're turning both their upper and lower body at the same time, and there's no real, like, twist. So that's the, the most, the ones that I use mostly just with the PVCs to start, so that guys understand, like, do you guys do that? Do that stuff? I'm smiling over here. Like so, the, the the way we do them, I do both, like the one behind the back. Yeah. And then we'll do it here, where they can actually like look down the line. Yeah. And they'll get there, and it's just trying to keep that PVC still while they're firing. And that's the exact same thing. We do this one so that they create that little bit better posture, so they hold their chest up, and then we'll go like fire and then turn so yeah. they actually feel like the direction you're behind it. If you notice his hip, like a lot of kids, a lot of kids when they're when they're hitting, they're just here and they just fall forward and just collide with the ball. So the ball is like they're they're not really getting into they're not loading and getting into their hip, mm -hmm. and, uh, like not over exaggerated, but they'll just be like. And then why they all get blown up is because they're just like back or doing some like weird just like there's no, it's not loading, right. it's just like falling right. and then like and then like colliding. I like okay. this one too. Go back to where you're at. Yeah, yeah. So. Put this on the front hip. Mm -hmm. It's right here. Now elevate your front leg, load in your hip, but don't lose contact with that PVC pipe. Yeah, 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 yeah I like that. that sway back. Yeah, you yeah. almost you have to. You like, gotta you, hold that against that. So now we're not swaying, but it's elevate and then ride that forward. Yeah, the first time you actually load properly, like for a whole hour or two, the next morning you're it's fried. Perfect. Like yeah, your, yeah. your hip is cooked. You know what I mean? But most of the time, goes just like, just get into the quad a little bit or whatever. That's what most kids feel, because that's what they, they, they've been taught. Here's another one. Here, set up. So just like <laughs> you were talking about posture in the mm -hmm. turn, grip this here, set this on. That sets there. Now posture. So all your kids that are pushing mm -hmm. that lead elbow. Yeah. You now once you start that turn, it forces that lead elbow to stay up, keep space. So now your posture, you're not getting that push, but that lead elbow is up. Especially with young kids that have a bad push pattern. Put that on top. I'll do it with click sticks too, so they can hear where it clicks. Yeah, most of the time also, you can, that same thing, if you see that a guy has like, so a lot of times if, I, if we could put a T to, to let a kid understand, if you take your hands out of it, because a lot of times I think kids get confused with like, what do I do like with my hands? And you go, well, if you just focus on what my shoulder plane is, then I don't have to worry about so much what my hands are doing in space, because sometimes guys can use, do I push back, do I go back? So this is what we do to eliminate that, Yeah. is we do this one, where PVC goes in the ground, and they just hold on. So instead of trying to push their hands back, load their hands, they just have to leave them there. 
So now, all right, where do my hands feel comfortable? Like I want them a little higher, a little down, whatever, but I want to think about creating that natural separation. So yeah. I'm going to step forward and then they just hold there. And so it gets them to, instead of trying to use these to load, they let their body work and the hands just stay back. And when the hands, when they don't do that, do it again, Case. When they don't, if they don't do it usually, that's when guys get cooked on the off-speed stuff because- I see this. They, yeah, they oh, this. that's what they'll do. The first move is there and it won't hide their hands behind their head. When he does it right there, his hands are still like in a good, strong position when instead a lot of guys would be like here and then they're already here. Everything's it's, coming. You're finished. Yeah, yeah everything's coming together. Though. Yeah. Yeah, then it's like, and they try to get that kick. I saw one on, I think it was both of your Instagrams where you're doing out in front. Yeah, yeah, one. and I so I love that one because now you're working on like Nate was talking about with that front with that lead elbow, like what a, a lot of kids don't understand they can't feel that front shoulder stay. Every time they move, the shoulder wants to go this way yeah. versus working upward. So we want to feel I'm going to hold that and hold that PVC so I can actually feel my body work behind my front shoulder versus that one to leave it. We, would, oh, we, we, throw, a, we throw a, a bunch of moves. Yeah, yeah, yep, put a frisbee yep. in the back end. So then you can feel that back arm actually work. Speaking of that, what did, what did you throw in your video? Is that like the disc golf? Yeah. 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 yeah so That's I'm, what you got too? I got I've got the little disc. Back, the, yeah. Walmart for 20 yeah, the, like the disc golf ones, and then I've got the rings. I love the rings for like when you're doing them like with both hands together, and you're swinging them like that. I love the rings because you can like actually like let them go. Yeah. Um, Have you done the load on the, the bands? with the front foot up elevated in it and then controlling it going forward with the bands around no. the chest or well those can we use up yeah yeah now the, with the with the pvc stuff what are you guys doing is that like in the beginning beginning of a session or is it it could be in a group little station it could be yeah however. so that's the way we do it is in a group so with pat and freddie they're uh, like pat would be in the cage or freddie's in the cage and then the other guys out with all the field stuff we got like three or four different stations set up with bands med balls, uh, mirrors, and PVCs. And I like doing all of our PVC stuff like in the mirror with them watching it. Because I want them to get that feedback instantly of like seeing their body while they're moving so they get the, the visual and the feel at the same time. Right. And that I feel like that translates a lot better because a kid can be like, hey, I'm doing it right. And, he, and you're like, okay, stride to balance. And he's like, like this. And you're yeah. like, no, no, look in the mirror. And he's like, oh, like, and so that, that gives them that self-awareness. Right. So you guys got two T's? Look, check, check it out. It, that, this another thing that we, in the beginning, a lot of times the kids that, and we were talking with Joey uh, last night, we were trying to say what's the most common, let's just say, let's say your floor thing that you, a kid would need to work on that you see, over and over and over and over again. Um, a lot of that stuff he's talking about with the front shoulder working on it because you see a lot of kids end up pulling instead of riding it out. They will pull. They'll. they'll use their front shoulder pull. I, my theory on it is that a lot of guys, when they're super young, they're taught to just like hit, they say, little, let it travel, let it travel, let it travel. It's like, and they'll mistake that for like, they'll be hitting balls back at the midline, like past the midline of their body and like weird, and just like filleting balls in the right field. And then when it does come time, when the velo, when, when, when the velo dictates like that you can't do that anymore, they're late and Later swings produce more effort. You're gonna swing harder because you're later. That's what you see. And then that's when you see guys get blown up and they start pulling the bathroom. So that PVC pipe also, when like guy, when, when guys say like, sometimes I'll see guys are just trying to be like way too square. Whatever they're like trying to be there. And they're like, they're saying it's like, if you're gonna hit, there's a ball here, right? That's low and away. And then a ball that's like up and in here and we try to let them see like without taking their hands, like if you go to that as slow as possible to try to cut it in half, like your shoulders, like my shoulders are not gonna hardly ever be just like, never gonna hardly Unless be. Unless the ball's at your neck. Yeah. That's what I tell guys all the time is try to get your back shoulder behind the ball. Where, where you see problems, because what are we all told as kids? Keep your back shoulder up. Keep, don't drop your back shoulder. Don't drop your back shoulder. Yeah. It's, it's when you go this way versus doing that. Right, so and you, if you notice, look at through his head. When his head gets behind, it's not behind his it's not back this knee. Way. That's it's the that's, that's the one I see all the time. Is they don't are, they want to stay up and stay up like this, and then their hands have to disconnect and go down the ball. They have no plate coverage. They have no path. And then if anybody's like, oh, you you got to drop your back shoulder. It's not a drop. It's no. a turn. Yeah. While this stays still, so we're not going that way. 
that's just as bad as doing the other move. We want to be stay still and turn around it. Or diving into it and then your head being in front of your front. Right, or getting that way, exactly. Here's how I explain it to a lot of my younger dudes. Tether ball. Makes me feel old when they don't know what tether ball is. But <laughs> you got a rope, ball on it. You're on this side, I'm on this side. This is our access point. If pole is tilted forward, when ball comes around this way, where's it going? It's going to be going down. Wait, wait, wait. Do that one more time again. So tether ball pole. Okay. That's our spine. Right. When it's tilted forward, so when I get past my spine, when the ball comes around this way, it's going to be going downhill. So yeah. that's your path. And then the body's going to try to work back to the center line. And if we get tilt rearward, when that ball's coming around here, we're working too steep uphill. So staying centered over that spine and turning around it. I like that. You just think about like tether ball pole. We yeah. want this to stay square. You're just going to have posture to plane with it. And kids start to get it when they realize, okay, hey, I'm not just swinging uphill. I'm just on plane with posture, and then my path carries it through. So, I like that. But once you get past it, you're going to always want to fight to get back. That's where we talk yeah. about triangle. That's well, because you, you got two basic functions of the body, protect and perform. If yeah. you are in a bad spot, your body's going to protect first. Yeah. It's not going to allow itself to get hurt. So it's going to get back into a neutral spot, Great a neutral spine mm -hmm. to go. So we see that a lot of guys, as far as getting out front and getting back, yeah. having them go, listen, you're either going to protect your body or you're going to perform. We're trying to skip protection and go straight into performance. I like that.